on. And we're going to be speaking on the subject, Renewed by the Holy Spirit. We're in a series right now entitled Renewed. And tonight we're going to be talking about Renewed by the Holy Spirit. Moreover, let me just make mention, in just a moment I'm going to invite the worship team to come back out here on the platform. And in our altar moment, we're going to move into a moment for people to ask the Lord to fill them with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to explain more of that to you in just a moment. But to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. Last year, South Texas was, was hit by Hurricane Harvey. The city of Houston was plummeted by 40 inches of rain in a 24-hour period of time resulting in $125 billion worth of property loss. Whole subdivisions, houses, communities, businesses were completely devastated. And what Houston learned was its flooding, floodwater infrastructure was just not adequate to meet the demand. Moreover, last year, outside of Miami, Florida, the Florida International University bridged, without notice, without warning, collapsed. Newly constructed, you probably recall some of the news reports, this bridge collapsed resulting in the loss of life. It was terrible. Had just been expect, inspected and had passed an inspection, but an investigation following that. They discovered that it was inadequately engineered, although they thought on paper it was. But in real-time experience, what they discovered, it was not adequate to meet the demands. You know, life is demanding. Young adults, students, probably more than any other generation that has ever, has ever been, there's more demands placed upon you than any other generation. In fact, in fact, young adults, they're saying that yours will be the generation with the likelihood of exceeding your parents in, in the American dream and earning power in life. You may be the first generation in over 200 years of American history that may not exceed your parents because of the demand, the economy, and challenges facing you. Life is demanding. It's probably tougher to be a parent than any other time in American history. It's, it's tougher being a spouse. I think divorce rates are revealing that here in America right now. But add on to that stresses and disappointments. It seems like everything is heavier and everything is more challenging than it has ever been before. Life Life introduces demands, challenging moments, interruptions. Someone has said life does not turn out as it should. Life turns out as it does. And I, as a pastor, I, I have to tell you, I don't always understand why bad experiences happen to good people. There are times being nice. And doing the right thing doesn't always necessarily mean there's an immediate reward and everything turns out good in your life. Do you know there are believers that love God and lose their marriage? Do you know that there are believers that serve God and do everything right and they confront the challenge of having a special needs child? And their life and, and is, 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 is dealing with issues that 
they did not expect and didn't plan on. Do everything right and then all of a sudden a diagnosis comes and it, it alters their life and it, it alters their, their future. Unable to meet the demands. I'm the middle of three boys. I have a brother that's a year and a half older. I have a brother that's a year and a half younger. The first one of us three boys, mom took us to church and Sunday school and we, all of that. But the first one of us boys in, in the Ryan household to ever really, what I'd say, have a spiritual experience where it, it's, it, was, it was obvious it was my little brother. My brother that's a year and a half younger, I still remember there are times that, that he would be weeping and, 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 and touched by God. And I, I didn't understand it. I mean, I, it didn't make sense to me, but I, I, I just had not grasped some of the depth of spiritual things. We were little kids. The first one to have an experience with God. But you take it just a few years after that, I was there when my dad and I went to the jail to Belly Mount, arrested for robbery. I went with my dad to court, and I still remember the day. I still hear that in my mind when the judge said two to ten years in prison. And that would be one of three stints he would spend in prison. And here is this younger brother I had that loved God and had intended to serve God. And, and his life became completely different, hardened, if you please. And all the evidence of prison life, the tattoos and the machoism and the, and the, and the rebellion and the anger and the hatred. What happened to him? He had an experience with God. I will tell you, he just wasn't able to meet the demands when he got in high school. The pressure and the temptation was so significant. Every one of you, young adults, high school students, adults, every one of us knows somebody that at one time their life was a, was a picture of, 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 of godliness and, and intention. And they, they, were, they were encouraging you in their faith. And they have completely walked away from it. Co- completely rejected that today. What happened in their faith journey? They were not able to meet the demands. But I want you to know God, God has a plan for us. God has a way that we can meet the demands. And that's being renewed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite you to join me in the book of Acts chapter 1. And I'm going to reflect on a few verses. And then I'm going to call the worship team back out here. And we're going to go into a moment for us to be renewed by the Holy Spirit this evening. In Acts chapter 1, it's a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. Now, what I need you to know, and this is very important when we read the text, if you don't get this, you're not going to capture the significance. And in fact, I'm going to say to many of you, you have, you have been given wrong information about the Holy Spirit. Many of us in this room, you have been taught, you've listened to sermons on the internet and podcasts and, and, and articles, and here's what you've heard. The moment you're saved, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to suggest to you the Bible teaches something else. Now that that preacher, that teacher told you that, but I'm I'm going to let Jesus speak to us and let Jesus clarify that question for us. So we're in the book of Acts in the New Testament, Acts chapter 1, verse number 4, and it says on one occasion, he, that's Jesus, was with him and he gave this command. He's given it a command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the, I want you to notice this phrase, the gift of my father, the gift my father promised. It's a gift. Now, now many people are teaching this is the gift of salvation, but I want you to hear what Jesus said, that Jesus said, my father has a gift for you, but what I need you to know is that the time Jesus 
is speaking this to the disciples. They are believers. The resurrection has already taken place. They are Christ followers. So he's saying to people who are already saved and have had salvation, my father has promised you another gift. It is not salvation gift that he is talking about. And he'll clarify that. Let's continue reading verse number four, which you have heard uh, me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, it hasn't happened yet, they're saved. They know the Lord. They've accepted the resurrection of Jesus. They are Christ's followers. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is a gift that did not come to them at salvation. Do you see that? It's a gift promised by the Father, but it's a gift that people who were Christ followers have not received. In other words, I can tell you Jesus makes clear that the gift of salvation brings Jesus into our heart. The gift of salvation brings Jesus into our heart. But there is another gift that happens after you're a believer, and it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse number 8. For you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's a different gift. When the gift of salvation comes, you receive forgiveness. But with the Holy Spirit comes power. It's two different gifts, and the result of these gifts in our life are different. Now, nothing, nothing purchases our salvation other than Jesus. The gift of salvation is the gift that I've received, and Jesus forgave me of my sins and you too. No, nothing can be added to that. Salvation is only in Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm about to go away, and I realize you're not going to be, you're not going to have what it takes to meet the demands. You're going to live in a world that's going to hate you. You're going to live in a world that, that there's going to be injustice. You're going to live in a world that's not going to play by the rules. And at some time, you're not going to be able to meet the demands. And the Father wants you to serve Him. And He's giving you a gift to help you meet the demands. And it's the Holy Spirit that I'm talking about. Addictions. Oh, I'm, I'm not just talking about drugs and alcohol. You know what? There are young ladies here tonight. You're addicted to the attention and affection of others. Yes. You look in the mirror every day, and you don't see yourself as God sees you. You see yourself as unfit. And you're always trying to, you're addicted to do things, look a certain way. You, you are obsessing about your appearance. Why? Because you want people, you want guys to notice you. And just the notice and the attention of that feels a longing in your life. We can get addicted to the needing other people's approval. The pressing Yes. Young adults. I, I, I pray with young adults. I'm thinking right now of a, of a young lady I prayed with recently, and she's always up. She's always fighting. And here's what she said. This week I'm all right. And that was so, that, that was so revealing because every week is whether I'm all right this week, always riding up the, the roller coaster how things are going and how people are treating her. Her emotions follow that. Habits. There's so many young adults in here. You, you're dealing with stuff and you promised God you'd never do it. You said, God, I won't ever do it again. God, take it away. You pled with God and you found yourself back in the same trap. You say, why is it I do things I hate to do? Because you're not able to deal with the demands. You see, temptation will always strike you in your weakest point. The enemy is relentless. He will pound on you. He will just torment you in your mind and that area of temptation and weakness in your life. 
but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to meet the demands. And in Scripture tonight, I want to give you three reasons to seek the language miracle gift of speaking in other tongues, being filled with the Holy Spirit. They're in the app notes, but let me just highlight them. The first reason is the gift of the Holy Spirit is personal. I'm going to jump over to Acts chapter 2 if you want to follow. Acts chapter 1 through chapter 4 is, is the initial outpouring. It's when Jesus said that the, the Father has a promised gift he's going to give you. It actually is fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4. But there's some mentions there in the scripture I want you to see that relate to us. And the first one is the gift of the Holy Spirit is personal. And the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost came... Notice this next phrase. It's in verse number 3. It came to rest on each one of them. Did you notice that? It came to rest upon each one of them. And, and although we know salvation is personal, sometimes we don't recognize the Holy Spirit is personal. Sometimes we... We, we relate the Holy Spirit to a group experience. We, we have to go to passion or we have to do this or we have to get. It's this group thing. I have to go to this cool concert because, man, I can feel the vibe. And it was just so great. It was so awesome. And we, we sometimes relate it to this group experience. May I just say the Holy Spirit is personal. Let me put it this way. God knows how you're wired. God knows how you tick and what ticks you off. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that good news? He knows everything about you and I. There's some of you, you're so spontaneous. And you know what the Holy Spirit will typically be in your life? Will be very spontaneous. And some of us, we're very measured. We're very calculated. And you know what? The Holy Spirit is personal enough to work with you and how you're wired. There's some people, you're, you're an extrovert. I've seen people when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, I mean... The extroverts, just like you know when they enter the room, you know what I'm talking about. There's somebody, when they come to work and they come in, the whole work area knows that they've arrived. You know what I'm talking about. They kind of they get announced when they walk in the room. I'm, I, I am an extrovert, okay? We're in restaurants, and Denise, my wife, is always saying, shh, shh. I don't have an inside voice. I, I just have... I, everybody knows when I'm talking. She's, she's, you're embarrassing me. I said, that's one of my spiritual gifts, okay? <laughs> yes, it. I am an extrovert, but my wife is not. She's very friendly, okay? She's very friendly, but she, she's just not this bombastic personality that, that I am. That's just the difference. But let me just say how the Holy Spirit is, is personal. There's some of you, you're very relational people. Oh, Facebook, when it came out, you said, thank God. that God is in technology because you are so relational. And you know what I will tell you? That's all right. God knows how you're wired. And you know what the Holy Spirit will be for you? The Holy Spirit will bring a sense of closeness to you. Why? Because you're wired relationally. But there are people in here, guys, some of you are very analytical. That's all right. That's how God wired you. And you know what the Holy Spirit will help you do? The Holy Spirit will help you with understanding because you're analytical and God created you that way. He's not going to uncreate you. He's going to work with how he created you and the Holy Spirit to you when you're filled. You, it will give you understanding. It begins to make sense for you in life. There's some of us, we're very wounded. Some of us, we're very wounded in life. You have this mentality, as the, as, as the title of one book says, come close, uh, stay away from me. Come close to me, stay away from me. You, you, you want to get close, but when people get close, you push them back away because you're wounded. And do you know what the Holy Spirit will be to you? He'll be a healer and a restorer to you. There's some, there's some, you're, 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 you're wounded by rejection. And the Holy Spirit to you will be a sense of acceptance. You see, the Holy Spirit is personal. And when the day of Pentecost came, he came to rest upon each one of them. And each one of them, in their unique way, experienced the Holy Spirit. 
and were able to internalize and the Holy Spirit worked through them in a unique way how they were wired. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit is because it is personal. Number two, number two, I share with you concerning the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is a partnership. It's a partnership. Verse number four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the 120 that were in a place we call the upper room. They were waiting for the promise that Jesus said, you're saved, but the Father's going to give you another promise. And this is not forgiveness. This is power to live life. And the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit came, and each one of them, notice that, there it is, it's personal again. He filled each one of them, and they all began to speak with tongues as the Spirit enabled them. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. At no time is the Holy Spirit going to take you into a trance. At no time are you going to leave this dimension and go into another dimension. It, it's, it's not mystical. It's not spooky. In fact, you will not be filled with the Holy Spirit if you're not willing to be a partner. I hear, I see people wanting to seek the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and they'll say, God, do it if you, if you want to. If God wants me to be filled, he'll, he'll fill me. Okay? Uh, that's not how it works. It's a partnership. They spoke, and the Holy Spirit filled them and gave them the words. It's a partnership. And one of the reasons that God uses the language is the whole idea of partnership. We have to participate with and yield to the Holy Spirit. And number three, number three, I share with you concerning the gift of the Holy Spirit is the gift of the Holy Spirit is powerful. It's personal. It's, pers it's, it's very personal. It's a partnership, but number three, the gift of the Holy Spirit is powerful. Notice uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 14, a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. Is strengthened personally. Why is that? Because all of us have been in a service and other people were blessed and we were warmed and encouraged just by the participation and the surrounding of being being with brothers and sisters of, of faith together. But there's going to be a day you're going to walk out and they're not going to be with you. And you're going to have to have the strengthening of the Lord. I'm absolutely convinced my brother who had the first experience of God of any of us three boys, what he missed was he didn't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. And when he got into high school, when they said, come on, let's go party. And we all know that what that means. Okay? We all know what that means. He got into that. And, 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 and there were times he, he struggled. He, I'm not going to do it. No, I don't realize that. I, but it was just, he was not able to meet the demands. And you know what? There's too much distance between Sundays. You just can't live Sunday to Sunday. You need something that's personal and powerful in your life. And what you have to do is, in that moment, you can escape. And I will tell you, I pray in the Spirit under my breath when I'm driving down the road. I pray in the Spirit when I'm walking down the hallway, I pray in the Spirit at night. I pray in the Spirit in the morning. I just communicate. And what it allows me to do, it allows me to leave my opinions and my perspectives and my, my weakness and my failures and my condemnation and my struggles and my, my limited insight. And for a moment, I escape. And all of a sudden, I get in tune with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit imparts wisdom. He imparts discernment. He imparts the, what I need in the moment. And He wants to do the same thing for you. 
He wants to bring his strength. And there's some of us, there's some of us that we deal with hopelessness. There there are young, young adults right now There's, there's young ladies in this room, you, you have played by the rules. You have refused to just give your body to anybody just to go along with the crowd. And you played by the rules and you feel like that you've been looked over. And you feel like that, has God forgotten? Has, is, is my perfect person not coming to me? And in the weakness, you've wondered and questioned your faith. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can bring and renew God's promise in you. He can do that. Guys, let me talk real to us. Every guy, every man in here, every young man, you know what the, you you know the, the battle you face with lust. You want to serve God. You want to do right but you know what it's like to just battle that in your mind all the time. The Holy Spirit can help you with that. If you try to deal with that on your own, you will not be able to meet the demand. But the Holy Spirit can. There's not an issue, a weakness, a pothole, a problem. The Holy Spirit is not capable of helping you with. So I'm going to invite the audience to stand together with me right now. Worship team, would you come? And God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's God's intention. So you would be filled to meet the demands. Whatever that is, to meet the demands. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Across this audience, from front to back, side to side, this may be very different for you, but I, I, allow me. Just trust me as pastor of this church for a moment. Let me, let me lead you into a moment. We're going to fill this house with worship. But if you've never received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to invite you to do something. I'm going to invite you in a moment to come down. Some of us, we remember a time we were, and we prayed in the Spirit, but we talked ourselves out of it or... Maybe our relationship with God has grown distance and we're not, we're, not, we're not praying in the Spirit anymore. If that's you, I'm going to invite you to come down. You say, I don't fully understand it. The good thing about God, you don't have to fully. These 120 didn't understand it. God filled them and then it, really they figured it out later on. It's just willing to say to God, yes, I want all that you have. And it's a promise of the Father. It's a gift. It's not the gift of salvation. Salvation brings forgiveness. The Holy Spirit brings power. And if that's what you're longing for, that's what you want, I'm going to invite you to come and just stand here right now. And I'm going to lead you in a time of worship here, of receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now join me. Join me. Come on. That's what you want. That's what you want. Join me. Join me. Spirit God, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah Lord, Holy Spirit God in Jesus name, 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 name. for everyone that's down in the front, let me just have your eyes for a moment, let me just tell you, Let me tell you what the Bible says has to happen for you to be filled with the Spirit. There's two things. You need to be a child of God, a Christ follower. You do not have to be perfect. And the first thing that you're going to hear in the back of your mind, you're not good enough for. You remember what you did last week. You remember. uh, That's under the blood. That's under the blood. Jesus, forgive. You've asked God to forgive you. Fine. So let's take... Let's take that doubt away. The only other thing the Bible requires is that you ask. You ask, and I believe that's what you've done. So what are you going to do? I'm going to invite you to begin to worship God. I want you to verbally worship. It's a partnership. If you don't give God something to work with, God will not work with you. This is the partnership. 
This is the partnership. And the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the marvelous works of God. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to usher you into God's presence. And nothing does that better than worship. So right now, audience, everyone, I want you to just begin to worship. Would you just do that? Just worship. Right now, just worship. Just, just, if, if it helps you, just close your eyes. Verbally, just say it. Just for verbally. It doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to sound like mine. It doesn't have to sound like me. I want you to forget about it. No one's looking at you. The camera's not on you. It's not that. It's you. It's right now. Oh God. Oh God. Now just as you pray, Lord, Lord, just say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Just want you to say that over and over. Oh Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Just fill me with the Holy Spirit. Just fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Just fill me with the Holy Spirit. His presence is coming in the house. Now I'm just going to invite you. I'm just going to invite you to just to continue and we're going to worship. But I'm going to invite you to just not worship in English and Spanish. I'm just going to, as the Holy Spirit comes, there will be promptings. There will be there will be these promptings of the Spirit. Speak them out. I'm not going to, we're not going to manufacture it. I'm not going to push anything on you. And no one is going to push you down. We don't do that at Westover. We don't push it on you. We don't push you down. Jesus wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. So let's begin in worship right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Spirit, you are And feel the atmosphere. Let this, let this force be your prayer. God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Spirit of God, come flood this place. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Holy Spirit, move in this place. We want your presence, God. We want your presence, God. Jesus. Now just continue to worship, but don't do it in English and Spanish right now. Let's just do it.
across the auditorium. Spirit-filled people, pray in the Spirit. Would you just do it? If you're in the audience and you're Spirit-filled, just pray in the Spirit. Right down here on the altar. Let's just worship the Lord in the Spirit right now. We're not going to force it. We're not pushing it on you. We're not going to push you down. But I'm just going to invite you. Just begin to pray in the Spirit right now. A language comes to us, an utterance comes from the Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit feels they speak. God's not going to come down and shake you and force it upon you. You're going to just very gently yield to it. Let's just pray in the Spirit. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, just continue, just continue, just continue. When you begin to speak in this in tongues, when you begin to speak in that spirit language, it's different, it's not learned. It's just an obedience. It is you. You just obey the Lord. Oh God. Holy Spirit, oh God. Holy Spirit, come into this place, God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, come into this place now. 